G'day and welcome back for more Space Engineers testing. Today we've got pistons and pistons and pistons and rotors and rotors and rotors. And with a little, or actually with a whole lot of luck, we might get away without summoning Clang. I want to take a look at a few things that I feel we should try since the physics update. Something I probably wouldn't have tried prior to it, as it would have ended with, well, explosions. What I've got here is a piston on its own, and a piston stacked on top of another piston. They're both set up to the same height, they've got the same distance between them and the top of this archway. The reason I've set them up this way is I want to confirm that stacking pistons on top of each other will increase their speed. So effectively we can get twice the speed out of these stacked pistons. And these pistons are all set up to be the same speed. If we have a look in our terminal, we can go to our piston here, which is set up at 0.5 meters per second. Our double piston, number one, same. Double piston number two, the same. So if I select all three of these, and start them at the same time, and the stacked pistons do actually increase speed, they should reach the top of the arch twice as fast as the other one, or in half the time is probably a more accurate way to say that. So let's see if that happens. And yep, it's pretty clear. The double stacked pistons are actually faster. So that's good. If we set these to maximum speed, do we still have things work properly? So I'm standing on top of three pistons, all of them are set to 5 meters per second, which should be able to launch me a little bit up in the air. So let's grab those three. If I hit reverse, I should do a little hop at the end of their extension. Yep. Excellent. We're going to come back to that idea after we take a look at some rotors. Just like we tested the pistons, I think testing the rotors might be a good idea too. We want to make sure that they also can stack their speed. So we've got similar to the piston setup, a double rotor with the same speeds on each of them as this single rotor. We go into our terminal, we've got our rotor double, set up to 5 RPM, same on the other rotor double, and the rotor single, same again. So we can select all three of those, and this time we'll undo our rotor lock, and the one on the right is clearly moving at about half the speed of the one on the left. It's made a half a rotation, and the other ones are already made a full rotation. So rotor stacking works. Turns out that's a good thing because I haven't managed to get this system to work properly. If you have a way to make this work properly, please let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear about it as I have some ideas that I'd really like to try with this. What I've got set up here is something similar to what I used at the end of my rotor video. And that is a rotor set up with a thruster on override out on its arm. You might think, oh, I've set this up so that I can start it when I need to. Well, sort of, but not really. This thing, it's not working. We've got our rotor off. We have no braking torque. We can undo the lock. Undo inertia tensor, add inertia tensor, and there's a whole lot of nothing. It doesn't move. I suspect this is as this happens as a result of the change in behavior of thrusters and subgrids and center of mass, where the thrusters now apply force to the shared center of, center of mass, which is great for ships that have rotors and pistons on them, but not so great if you want to use this to create 
a spinning device that goes faster than a single rotor can go since each rotor can actually only go up to 30 revolutions per minute whereas if we we're allowed to use constant addition of force from a thruster we could probably go much faster I wondered whether this might be a result of the rotor being on the same subgrid as uh, being a direct subgrid child of the station so I also did the same thing with a landing gear and again we can have a look at this one the rotor landing gear thruster it's off share inertia tensors off rotor locks off and we get no movement with either of them while our thrusters on rotors didn't really work we can stack our rotors and get some quite good speed out of them let's see just how much we've got all these set up to 30 rpm with enough torque to hopefully spin this thing nice and fast we're already up to 60 70 80 90 meters oh 100 108 109 so this is proof of the fact that we can actually break the physics speed limit with a subgrid and before everyone gets ill let's see if i can launch myself can i time it one two three Whee! so while we're able to exceed the speed limit on a subgrid when we're launched from it we don't exceed the speed limit and when we put shared inertia tensors on across the whole lot of this stack of rotors it seems to try and keep the whole rig within the physics speed limit it does exceed it slightly at times but then at other times it does what's happening now and some of the rotors seem to stop actually spinning i haven't worked out the conditions under which that happens it seems to be somewhat inconsistent as you can see here all of these are set and trying to move this one's not really doing a great deal when it's working properly normally the top one's spinning at full speed the next one down spinning at full speed and then the third one spinning slowly but right now you can see that with inertia tensor on we're gradually slowing down further and further and further as soon as i turn it off we'll accelerate and things will start to wobble so there might be situations where you can use the inertia tensor but if you're wanting to fling something at full speed or if you're wanting to get a subgrid for some reason to travel at higher than full speed you'll have to have your inertia tensor off now that we've had a look at some of the effects that have changed with rotors and pistons and things we can actually take advantage of with rotors and pistons since the physics updates happened let's have a look at something almost practical I'm, I'm still not sure whether I'm being frivolous here or whether I'm being practical but what I've built is a whole bunch of pistons 21 of them in fact connected with blast doors and I did that so that they wouldn't extend quite as far as if I just stacked them one on top of each other as you can see here these are side by side so that slightly shortens this thing and they're all set up to their maximum velocity that means I pop myself up here in theory each of them providing five meters per second of speed should allow us to get up to a top speed of 105 meters per second in practice it's not quite so much let's take a look at just how much we grab our pistons and we hit reverse we will start being launched we got up to 85 meters per second before we slowed down a little bit at the end but we're still launched at a pretty good speed and have managed to be flung a fair way toward the ice below if you set this up properly and you were on level ground it seems like you could get out to about 750 meters as that's how far i was from the antenna at the base when i was about horizontal from it not quite enough to keep you out of range of the turret of a large grid but maybe if you line these up better or put a few more on them you might get a better result let's bring this thing back down before it wobbles itself silly 
And if we hit reverse, it'll all collapse down. And there is another prime example of subgrids not damaging themselves. There's no way this thing would have survived if these weren't basically invincible when interacting with each other. And we might just have to wait for that to settle. Because the next test, we're launching something much more fun. The thing we're launching is otherwise known as a Clango Lantern. Given that we're getting very close to the end of the year, it's definitely time for our pumpkins from Halloween to say goodbye. And here we have a small ship with googly eyes that looks like a pumpkin, so it's the next best thing. Now that we're all loaded up in our launcher, let's see how far we can get this thing to go. Need our remote access to our large grid, and launching in three, two, one, launch. Whoa! Oh, it actually got us up to a similar speed as the player. This thing's launched us miles. We're about level now. It was almost a kilometre. It's almost launched us all the way down to the ice. Oh, that is cool. But, you know, launching pumpkins is one thing. What if you wanted to launch something a little more destructive? And maybe even something that could reload. The final device I've got set up today has a stack of rotors, an arm attached to it, and on that arm we have some weaponry. What we've got is a welder. And that welder is there to build this ship. And the tiny little ship on top is simply a merge block with nine armed warheads on top. We've got the projector below just to make... And on small grid just to make sure that everything fitted nicely. We use the rotor to do the conversion to that. What we've got over here is a sensor that will detect this arm as it comes past. And that sensor is set up to switch off the lower of these two merge blocks which will launch the upper piece off into the distance. If we hop into our control chair here and I think I should probably turn on the shared inertia tensor since this thing has a habit of wobbling around and with this chair so close that's probably not a good thing. So let's start spinning her up See if we can get some good speed going. Oh yeah. Then if we want to launch, we simply activate the sensor. And hopefully, it'll detect it at some point soon. There we go. And you can see, this has actually launched that thing a long, 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 long way. Well, does it make the ice? Oh, pretty close. If you could set something up like this to launch far enough, you could get quite a considerable amount of destruction going. And instead of having to fly something over an enemy base, you can actually just launch warheads into it. With a bit of scripting, you could probably even make this thing completely automated so it just keeps launching and launching and launching. Probably even manage that with a few timers. But I just wanted to show my simplest method, so we'll turn off our sensor, we'll turn on our merge block and then a new warhead is welded in place. And three, two, one, turn on the sensor and come on, launch. There we go. We could probably get that going even further if this base was slightly tilted off like that so that it launched it up instead of just straight out at the horizontal.
We'd only destroyed one pumpkin so far and that just didn't seem enough. And now we've seen that they actually roll surprisingly well down the hill. They do not roll so well when they run into each other though. They kind of go kaboomy. If you've got any designs of piston based or rotor based launchers that you want to show off, I would love to see them as I think it would be all kinds of amazing to be able to try and build something that launches that way and use it in survival to try and take on an enemy base. It would potentially be cheaper than something that's semi powered because then you don't lose the thrusters and the batteries and all that. You're only firing the warheads and a merge block, which is a lot cheaper. Or warheads and a rotor head if you can manage to get that working. As always, there is plenty more to come, so I'll see you then.